Hey, welcome back guys. Okay, so let's do with our request.php class in here. Something I forgot in the session.php, we can add one more uh, function here called O. This one is similar to the, to this, <clears throat> wait a minute, get, uh-huh, uh-huh. Okay, we're just gonna copy this get here, but, um, actually, you know, we just need to modify this a little bit. So when we say get, no, let's use the all. I think it's better to have very distinct function for that. So let's paste here and just say all. And we don't need a key there. We'll just say if not empty. And let's remove that and then return that. Okay, as simple as that. So this just returns all the variables from the var section and not the user section, right? Like we did with, where is this? Where are the things I'm, <laughs> I'm looking for here? What is going on? The user function, oh, this one right here. So this one can return uh, all the variables from the user thing uh, if we don't provide a key. So you could do the same thing with the get here. If you don't specify a key, it can just get everything. But sometimes you don't want that. So let's just uh, put the, the O here and return no if things don't go well. Uh, yeah, that would be a problem here. This doesn't return Boolean, does it? No, this should return a mixed value which makes me wonder where I got this from, right? He's logged in. Uh, yeah, okay. User that's mixed. Boo, that's okay. Make sure the return values are correct. Get this one is wrong. So let's use mixed there. Okay, great, great. What else? Uh, this one returns a Boolean, that's okay. Okay, so that's good. Now, at some point, I'm going to show you guys how to, um, because this ties in with the session thing here, how to add user permissions, how to give each user very specific permissions on what they can actually do. So I'll give you guys an example of a project I did uh, where you, you can see this is what we're going to do. This is just a plugin as well. And this plugin is about user roles. So in this case, there are roles here. For example, this row is staff. This is just a member of staff, but you can decide now what the member of staff can actually do. So this person can view statistics. Uh, for example, here, it's very granular control and it's up to you what you want to, how detailed do you want this to be? This is quite a lot of, uh, what do you call these? These are permissions, I guess. These are permissions and this is the role of the user and what permissions do they have? So in this case, for example, a member of staff can view users, can add a user, but cannot edit or delete a user or even change user roles. So this is what you can choose. So for every um, role that's there, you can give permission. This one can do nothing just like this one and management can do certain things here that uh, ICT people have access to everything, I guess, but the admin has access to all permissions by default. So you can't remove the permissions of the admin here. Uh, so this kind of thing, this uh, we're going to create this kind of thing here. Now to help facilitate this plugin, we will put an inbuilt thing here a function which we're gonna call user can. So before I forget, because I usually forget these things quite easily, let's add a function here called user underscore can. This will be a very important function. Um, then here we'll put permission. Let's say permission like that. Okay, so how we're going to be using this is in in tandem with that plugin is whenever you want to check if a user has certain permission all you have to do is just say if user can like this if user 
can and then you name the permission that you want as you can see the permissions here for example add a branch or edit user or something like that so all you have to do here is just say if user if user can edit user like that and once you put that in there it will return a true or false whether that can actually work and if the answer is true then you allow that user to edit users and stuff so that's how we're going to be dealing with uh, user permission now the beauty of this system is that as you see it here you see all these permissions are not hardwired here into um into the system here so what happens is if i remove the users because there's a user manager here as a plugin so this this users thing here unfortunately i can click there because there's actual data so this is a users manager this is what allows me to edit add uh, edit and delete users so minus the login and sign up uh, system there but if i remove this plugin that manages users automatically it goes with its permissions so if i remove this plugin or disable it for some reason and come back to user roles i will not find these edit user delete user because there's no plugin that actually allows you to do that anymore so the plugin comes with a permission so once i remove it automatically all those permissions disappear from here because they are now useless so that's the kind of system we are building here all right a little bit of a tangent there but uh, let's get back to business so i'm going to go back here so let's leave this function for now we're just going to tell it to return true at the moment because we have permission to everything that's fine okay so let's close that let's go back to our request part here and we're going to do similar things here so in the request class let me just copy this part here uh, let's put that here great okay so you can put your description here and describe this class as you wish now let's see a bit of some public functions here so let's do public function method so of course we need to be able to check what method is being used right now to load this page is it get or post or whatever so here we just do a return this is a very simple thing return um, server request method that's all so instead of having to type this all the time you can just do something like request uh, method like that and they need to bring you whether it's post or something like that okay so that's all we needed to do here this is usually a string so this returns a string uh -huh. uh, what else mm, public uh, function posted this is for us to check if something was posted right so in this case it's going to be this kind of uh, wait yeah we're returning true or false so um, I'll do this this returns a boolean which is true or false so here we're returning the question return this is equal to post like that okay so if this is equal to uh, post it's going to return true if it's true or if it's false this is not posted to return false so as simple as that so let's come back here what else do we need here yeah so let's get another one that gets our data so public function post like that okay now usually in the post variable we just have strings right so the result of this is a string and in here we expect a string key like that which is optional okay so key what else what else what else yeah 
So what this returns is if there's a key, um, let's do return null if we don't find anything. Now null is not a string. So to keep in line with a string, we'll return an empty if that post value does not exist. Okay. So this is another beauty of using functions to grab obvious uh, values because let's say you want to retrieve a variable in the post, maybe something like um, username or email, but it does not exist. This will cause an error because it will say undefined variable. But in this case, it will return an empty string, which means we no won't get an error, um, but we will know that it's empty or it does not exist. So uh, we'll say if not empty. So we're getting things from the post variable here and using that very key there. Um, wait, post. Yeah, okay. So we're using that key and if not empty, then let's return that very item. So we copy and say return. What am I doing? Okay, there we go. Post key, right? But let, first of all, we need to check if the key itself is empty, then we return everything from the post. So if there is no key provided, let's just return all items from the post variable like that. Okay. Okay, so if empty key, return post. Uh, if not empty that, return that. If not, then we return an empty string. Okay, so great. Now, the same way we've done this, we should do this for the get as well. So that's public, we'll say get. The only thing that we change is the source. And so we just say get like that. Okay, very cool. Uh, let's see, post. Ba, 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 ba. Hmm. Yeah, I'm just trying to think if the post, the post variable always returns strings. Yeah, so just to be sure there. And then I want to change this to files as well. So I'm just going to do this. Duplicate that. I should get better at duplicating files, right? This one it comes from the files array. So let's change that to files. But this one is a little bit different because sometimes it can return uh, an array instead of a string, right? Sometimes it saves an array. So let's do that. Array or string. So let's see, return files. If not empty files key, then return that item, which could be an array. Alrighty then, this is great. Let's put one more that says return all. Uh, this one will grab from the request variable, though I don't like using the request variable here because what this one is, is a combination of get and post. So everything from the post and the get request is combined into this one. And it's rarely used because it's a bit of a security risk because it's better to know where you expect your value from, from the get or from the post, instead of just grabbing everything. But who knows, you may need this at some point. So we can just add it there. Now, or does not need a key, of course, so uh, we just need to return that. Wait, uh, would we need a key? Mm, eh, maybe, who knows? So let me, let me just undo that. It's optional anyway, so that's fine. Uh, what else? Uh, let's put one more called input. Right, let's see here. Okay, this one I will get from the post. So let me duplicate this. And I'm going to call this one input. And then let me put a string default value. 
which is optional as well. Okay, so the key and the value, the default value. So in this case, we're using this to say, if I don't find it, uh, which is exactly the same thing here, right? Here it returns an empty string, right? If we don't find what we are looking for. But in this case, we can actually specify the default value. Let's say, for example, if I say, I want to get from the post variable, I want to get something. So in this case, maybe request would be like this. We'll say request input and then say, I want to grab that email. But then if it does not exist, I want you to use email at email.com like that. So here we can say something like email is equal to and then the request and input. And then we want to grab the email. But if it doesn't exist, set this as a default value. So this is what we're trying to do here. So we can do something like this. All right. OK, so inputs uh, default value the only change here is that we return the default value like so so this is all meant to just give you as many options as possible we don't want to do this one here because the key here is a must it should not be optional at all so let's re remove that one so say if not empty blah 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 otherwise return the default value now, this is from the post variable, so we always expect strings because it's always strings in there. Unless I'm tripping or I forget. But in case for some reason you find that uh, it's not only strings being returned here, you can just change that to mixed. But I don't think there's a situation where you don't get a string because if you send files, it goes to the files variable. So, eh. Alrighty then, um, I think this does it. The functions we need, all files, get, input, post, posted, great. All right, so we need a class for pagination, but we don't need it right now. We can do this later. Now, the advantage of um, what we are doing here is that when we are developing, let's say I start developing the basic oath plugin here. And for some reason I figure, okay, maybe the pager class needs updating because it's not doing what I want really. Let me update it to make it more robust. Then I can come here and update the pager class. But the pager class is part of the core system, the MVC system. So you have to keep that in mind but the beauty of it is that now if I just go to the plugin folder and delete all plugins from here, then I'm back to the base MVC system, right? So I can use it in another project by just removing the plugins that I don't need from there and leaving the ones I need. And then I have a new system ready to go with all the updated code, even in the core system here. So it's a very neat system in that way, which means you can improve your framework over time and then use different versions of it for uh, upcoming projects of yours. Righty then, let me just go through here. All right, we're almost there, guys. So let's do the other classes in the next video. I'll see you then.